<laughs> oh, there's the drum roll. There is the drum roll from Mr. Jace on the case. Jace, welcome back to the lab here at My Golf DNA. It is very nice to see you on this fine Tuesday. And it's Tuesday, which means... Tour Pro Tuesday. It is Tour Pro Tuesday, and also Election Day. Election Day. Well, I gotta tell you right now, this is gonna be way more exciting than whatever's gonna transpire in this election. That's right. And we have somebody that is not a first-timer here at My Golf DNA. Not a first-timer. But we have somebody that I know a lot of you at home like. And I know a lot of you at home would like to play golf with. But why did we pick her today? We picked her today because she is probably having one of the best LPGA Tour seasons in the history of LPGA. That's a pretty safe bet right there. I would say that when somebody tees it up 14 times and they win six of those times, I would call that a pretty good sized percentage of wins. That's almost a 50% win rate. That, that's almost a 50% win rate. How about that? Nelly Corda, ladies and gentlemen, we have her back on the block today because she was just named the Rolex Player of the Year and we really love her golf swing. And we thought to ourselves that because we had just kicked off the first day of the Drop 2 program yesterday where we had a lot of people sign up for what? Wedge play. Wedge play. People want to get better inside of 100 yards. And I don't blame you because if you watch the best players in the world, they are ridiculous. They're lights out. And so many people, when I when I first, when first you first come to the website and we sit down in the consult phase and we talk about your short game, most of you say, oh, I got pretty good short game. But I, you know, I want to get a little bit better at it. If you see what pretty good short game looks like in their eyes, I mean, you would save a lot of strokes. Be a little bit different than ours. We got a lot of exciting stuff coming to you this this uh, off season and helping you guys build really good technique, but also being able to approach your short game a whole lot differently. We're going to help you understand what's good information, what's bad information, and we're going to help you design perfect programs for each and every one of you because that's what we want to do. That's right. We love helping. It's going to be a fun winter. This week we have a big, big week coming because we have Jace on the case going to be heading out to the range with his kickoff video for you folks at home where he's going to be talking to you guys about the differences between chipping and pitching. He's going to be showing you some really buttoned up technique that a lot of you can start to develop on your own. And he's also going to be showing you some cool little drills that you can use at home or even on the driving range to become much better around the greens. And then on top of that, we're going to be showing you a drill together where we go out there and we start talking about exactly what you're going to learn here today and how to keep your release very consistent from a seven iron or a driver, even into a wedge and start being able to expand your arsenal by using your body a little bit more or a little bit less through the point of contact. That sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? What do you think? I think it's pretty awesome. Let's get to work. Oh, and don't forget. Oh yeah, and don't forget, if you're brand new to the channel, please do me a big favor, head down below, take a minute out of your day. We do a lot of really exciting content around here at My Golf DNA, so head down below and subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on your bell notifications and hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post that up. Now, let's get to work. So today we're talking about the release. And we know that in the world of golf instruction, there is a lot of big differences when it comes to how we relay information. And a lot of people sit there and try to wonder what they should be working on. Now today I wanna to start off by showing you something kind of fun. And I wanna look at the left-hand side of the screen here and show you after the point of contact with a wedge swing, I wanna look at this wrist and forearm rotation. A lot of you get scared of that word supination because you think that it's going to develop a lot of timing or a a lot of big misses in your game, and that's just not true. And I want you to look at the swing on the right-hand side of the screen where we're hitting a full iron here, some sort of middle iron, and I want you to look at the hands just outside the lead thigh. Now, there's some differences that we could see a little bit more from a face-on perspective if we loaded up the swing to see that. And we could see some things definitely from down the line, which we're about to do. But I want you to look at the wrist and forearm action here really closely, and notice that she's still using the same wrist and forearm action from one swing to the next. Now, if you ever get the luxury of playing golf with a playing professional, or if you get a chance to play with Nelly Corda, and I know a lot of you at home are probably wanting to play with Nelly Corda, what you'll notice is, is right away, is how good they hit the golf ball. But you'll also notice how good they are at controlling their distance. Distance control is a huge part of the game, and a lot of you lack it because you don't hit the golf ball solidly. And when you get inside of that 100 yard mark, which a lot of you are getting ready to take on with us in the Drop 2 program, you haven't learned different ways to be able to control your body with your release in order to be able to deaden the sort of speed that you would have in a full swing shot. Let's think about that for a second. If I were to tell you that body turn through the hitting area slows the club face down, would you buy what I'm selling you? Well, you'd have to, because you have to understand that if your body's continuing to turn through the release, then the club head is more or less gonna be trying to move at the same rate that your body can turn. If your body stalls out, then we know that your body and your hands and your arms are working independently from one another and the club can accelerate and go really fast. That's what we're gonna be working towards this week because I want you to understand that aside from playing professionals be, being able to hit the golf ball really good and solid, 
and being able to control their distance, they're also incredible from 100 yards and in. And a lot of you at home think that you have really good short games, but you ain't seen nothing yet until you watch these guys around the green. Now, what we're going to do here today is we're going to talk a little bit about the differences with the hand and arm path post-impact. We're going to talk about what we see first, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can go out there and start working on this stuff. But the most important piece that you want to remember is, is that you need to have a release pattern that's very much tied to your DNA. And how we develop a good release pattern is being able to create good, consistent hand and arm function down in front of our body, and then being able to put your body and your arm structure moving through the swing shape the perfect way that's matched up to your DNA. That's how we optimize your swing plan and your path, and how we get you to manage your angle of attack without having to make radical adjustments to the small muscles in your golf swing that can create a lot of chaos. Now, looking at this from a down the line perspective, what you're gonna notice on the left-hand side of the screen, this is a full iron swing. I want you to look at the right shoulder. I want you to watch the right shoulder and right arm function through the release, okay? So this is where the hands are just outside that lead thigh. You're gonna see the club head more in line with the hands here. Right shoulder is really staying back in behind where the golf ball would be. And what you're gonna notice from a down the line perspective when we start hitting a wedge shot is you're gonna see that the hands and arms are gonna turn a little bit lower and off to the left. And if you look at that same frame here just after impact, notice how the club head is actually still out in front of her hands. This is an indicator that she's using more of her body during the release. And what you would be able to see from a face-on perspective, instead of her buttons actually staying further back in behind her belt buckle, is her buttons would actually start to work more over the top of her belt buckle. And that's a good way for a lot of you at home to start using the same sort of release, but to be able to control the distance and control the speed in the club head without having to make any sort of active manipulation from the hands that could ultimately make it harder for you to get the club to the right low point, make it harder for you to control the angle of attack, and make it harder for you to be able to keep those catastrophic misses like fat shots and thin shots. So what I want you to remember is, is that you should start working on a release where you can get the golf club to work perfectly from one side of the ball to the other in a very small and condensed environment. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start playing around with it. I want you to be able to go out there and start getting your body to stall out like you would see in some of our impact series videos. But then I want you to start working on letting your body turn with that same sort of feel on the release. And what you're gonna find is, is that now you've just expanded your arsenal. You've now opened yourself up to be able to hit different shots on different trajectories, on different spin rates. And that makes you a much more dangerous golfer when it's all said and done. Later on in the week, I'm gonna show you how to work on just this. And then after that, we got our man Jace gonna be taking you guys out to the range as well, who's gonna be talking about the stark contrast between chipping and pitching. And he's gonna show you a really excellent way for you to be able to develop a perfect technique around the greens and inside of that 100 yard mark so that you can all start becoming a better force to be reckoned with. We'll see you guys later on in the week.